Hello, and welcome to Smitty's. Today, we're gonna to start a chainsaw porting class series. Now, I chose to start this series with a Homelite Super XL Automatic. I chose this saw because they are older and they are cheap to get. Uh, we need to practice before we get into our more modern day saws. So this is, it is, it is a good saw to start practice on, practicing with. Alrighty, so enjoy and make sure to uh, come back again. Alrighty, thanks. All right, so in order to get started, we need to make sure we get the bar removed. And to do that, we need to remove the bar nuts, the clutch cover, the bar plate, the bar, and the chain. As you see here, I'm just going to use a simple socket to remove the bar nuts. So once the bar nuts are removed, it is easy to remove the bar plates, the clutch cover, the bar and chain. So next we're going to get into the muffler. We need to do that by removing a few screws. And as you can see, one of them has been replaced already and one of them is missing on this particular saw. This is common. Now I have a little tip. Slowly work it back and forth to help break any corrosion that might have built up inside. This helps prevent the bolt from breaking. Uh, it just takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of time, but you should you should be able to feel it release until you can slowly work it all the way out. Now that the bolts are released, we can easily remove the components of the muffler. From here, we can see the piston. We need to examine the piston at this point. You see those uh, horizontal lines? Those are scoring. So I'm going to have to address an issue with this saw as we get into it. This could be a sign of me needing to replace the piston and cylinder. Uh, we won't know until later for certain, but this is a sign that it, it this could possibly need some additional work. Now at this point we can see inside the cylinder and we can also see the top of the transfers. Now the next step we need to do is remove the spark plug. Now what you see me using here is called a compression tester. I always try to compression test before and after so that I know what changes I have made in the build. It simply screws right into the spark plug hole. Now in order to do a compression test, I simply just pull the cord several times to see to watch the compression build. Usually after about eight times, compression is at its peak. And 
And as you can see here, I have roughly 130 pounds of compression. On this particular gauge, it gives me readings in five pound increments. And as you can see, two, two marks above the 120 would be 130 pounds of compression. So now we are going to move into a spark test. And on, I'm going to use a simple spark tester available at most auto parts stores. It simply plugs right into the spark plug hole, but I'm going to bypass the spark plug and just set it right on one of my bar studs. Once it's set up, you simply pull on the cord and you can see This is a good spark. Sometimes that light is brighter. Sometimes it is weaker. If it is weaker, you may have a weak spark situation. Now here is an example of a spark test by using a simple screwdriver. You'll be able to see the spark arc between the screwdriver and the side of the saw. Now it is time to check the saw for squish. We're going to do this by using simple plumbing solder. Now the squish is a measurement. It has to do with the piston and the cylinder. It's the distance between the piston and the very top of the cylinder whenever it is all the way up. Okay? So whenever that piston is traveling up and down, the squish is that measurement, that little gap between the top of the piston and the top of the cylinder. Um, the less squish you have, the more compression you have. Um, so just a little pointer there. In case you didn't understand. Alrighty. Now this particular solder, I like to measure it beforehand. And as you see, it comes up at 0 0.078, which is commonly referred to as 78 thousandths. Now, in order to do this test, we simply stick it in the spark plug hole and push it over to the edge of the cylinder. You can feel it make contact. Just push it over until it makes slight contact to the edge of the cylinder. At this time, you just pull on the cord one time. And now, as you look here, the piston, as it... it what traveled up and down, it never made contact with my solder, which means my squish is more than 78 thousandths. So I'm going to do a simple little twist here to try to get an inaccurate reading, but to kind of give me you know, somewhat of a reading. And as you can see, I just twisted it up. Now, if you have to use this method, you have to cut the end off, just a little bit off the end. Pull on the cord one time. Pull it out, and now you can see where the piston made contact with the solder. Again, this is not an accurate method but it helps give me a ballpark. Now in order to measure it, I have to measure as close to the edge of the solder as I can. And as you see, I'm coming up at 87 thousandths. Now 
Now at this point in the build, we're going to start making some notes. So the squish is at 87 thousandths. And our compression starts is 130 PSI. All right, so we, all, we always want to make notes as we go along so we can see the changes at the end. So now I have a little note here with my squish and my compression. Now this solder that I'm using is 330 seconds. They do make larger solder. So if you're purchasing solder to do this, they do make a larger one that you shouldn't have to do this twist. I wasn't concerned about it because I know by the time I'm done adjusting the uh, squish on this saw, this solder will work just fine. I was just worried about getting into the ballpark figure, if you know what I mean. Um, now, if you want to get into doing a lot of these builds, you will probably have solder of different sizes because saws with squish down around 20 thousandths you'd want solder that's a little bit smaller than this. You know what I mean? So you'll have different solders of different sizes for, for me making these measurements. Um, now, this is gonna be it for this video. So make sure you subscribe, like, uh, hit that alarm bell and share it as much as you want. Come on back and I hope you enjoy. Alrighty. Thanks. Later.